not know is that Juliana was an activist who one day decided she had to do something to make change happen. She had to run against a hand-picked Bruce Rauner puppet. And she did that as an activist. She just decided it was time. She didn't know at the time she was thinking he had to be defeated, didn't know she should be the candidate, but decided to run. Just like Shana here is running for county board. <laughs> stepped forward and put together a grassroots campaign. And not just any grassroots campaign, she managed to put together a campaign with labor, with people all across her district, and what do you know, she beat the incumbent by 30 percentage points. She beat the Rounder's hand-picked candidate by 30 percentage points, so she's a Rounder slayer and we're going to do it again. Now, I just want to say a couple of things to you. You know, uh, this campaign isn't just about beating Bruce Rauner, but we're going to beat Bruce Rauner. Yeah. Yeah. This campaign is about a vision for the state of Illinois. It's about standing up for working families. It's about standing up for people who are striving to get to the middle class, who are in the middle class, and standing up for people who need government. This government plays an important role. I don't think Bruce Rauner believes that. I believe that this campaign is about standing up for people all across the state that have been forgotten and left out. <clears throat> standing up and saying no more. We need to make sure that we're addressing the kitchen table issue. That's what we're trying to do in this campaign. The things that really affect people's lives every single day. You've got a budget at home. What's happened in the state of Illinois? Stagnant wages for more than a decade. Rising cost of health care, rising cost of sending your child to college. And as a result of all that, lowering people's standards of living. That's just wrong. And here along comes Bruce Rauner. And what's his agenda, that hidden agenda that was underneath that dry clean car heart jacket? <laughs> he pulls it out and it's the Koch brothers' right wing agenda. And what does it say at the top? Destroy labor unions. Lower wages in the state. Lower workplace safety in the state of Illinois. Those are things that he believes in. Why? Why would anybody believe in those things? Because he thinks that's how you create jobs. If you lower people's wages and lower their workplace safety and lower their standards of living, businesses, he says, will move to Illinois. They'll flock to Illinois. He's wrong. And he hasn't created any jobs in the state of Illinois. He, in fact, people thought they elected him because he's a businessman who knew how to create jobs. Actually, in his own business, he fired people to make money. <laughs> I think you want a governor who wakes up every day thinking about how to raise people's standards of living, how to make sure that you've got workplace safety standards that we can all rely upon. And I tell people all across the state, by the way, who don't belong to labor unions, how important it is that we have labor unions fighting for working families. Because everybody, whether you belong to a union or you don't, Everybody benefits from the work that labor unions do to maintain those standards. I, but this campaign has been about addressing those kitchen table issues to make sure we raise wages, stand up for our labor unions, make sure we're creating jobs in this state, and we put forward a plan for creating jobs. Two-thirds of all the jobs that get created in this state get created by small businesses, the other third by large businesses, Oh, by the way, we have a governor who badmouths the state every single day. You think large businesses look at Illinois and say, I want to go to a state where the leader is badmouthing the state every day. No. You want a leader who understands that we have the most educated, dedicated workforce in the entire nation, and that is why businesses want to come here. That is why, and that's why we've got to invest in our higher education system and make college affordable for everybody. Make sure we're lowering the cost of tuition for kids who want to go to college and providing vocational training and career technical education in high schools. And starting at the very beginning, universal preschool and quality child care. Yes. And in the middle of that, funding properly our K-12 education system because every child, 
no matter the color of their skin, no matter the income level of their parents or the zip code they live in, deserves a quality education all across the state of Illinois. We put forward real plans because we have a vision for the state. Bruce Rauner has none, and you see it on TV every day. He's running this negative campaign every single day. He has not run a single positive ad, not a single one. It's not shocking, because what has he got to brag about? <laughs> Three and a half years in office, really, what has he got to brag about? Nothing. Absolutely no accomplishments. So Bruce Rauner's got a 30% approval rating in the state. And a lot of people think that he can't win with a 30% approval rate. I think 30% sounds hot. <laughs> but people with a 30% approval rate, you might think he, he, you know, he, he can't possibly win. But there was another guy that ran in 2016 that had a 30% approval rating. And he's president of the United States today. That racist, xenophobe, misogynist. Stop <laughs> we, we need real leadership in the state on behalf of working families that believes in lifting up people all across the state. That's what we bring. That's what we're going to do. And that's what you're going to help us do. Folks, this office isn't just four walls. It is a place of community to work together as activists for real change in the state of Illinois, and we need you. Isaac talked about signing up for shifts and being involved in phone banking and door knocking. I've been doing that my whole life. My mother was an activist. When I was a little kid, I like to say she dragged me around with her knocking on doors. During the primary, I couldn't say this, but now I'll say it. One of the first candidates that I knocked on doors for was Teddy Kennedy. <laughs> I couldn't say that back in the primary. <laughs> but I'm so proud of that fact and the fact that my mother was out there as an activist marching for the ERA and for a woman's right to choose, and I was right there with her. And isn't it exciting that we passed the ERA? In the yes. yeah. And I was so proud right after that vote to pick up the phone and call the governor of Virginia, the newly elected governor of Virginia, and ask him, will he make sure that they bring it to a vote in Virginia so that we can finally, finally get the 38th state and make sure that we codify in the Constitution that <laughs> women are equal to men. <laughs> so folks, I, I gotta tell you, this is not gonna be easy. We've got 117 days left in this race, not that I'm counting. <laughs> With 117 days left in this race, every one of them is going to count. It's going to be a real battle, a real fight, and i got to ask you, are you ready for the fight? Yes! yes! Are you ready for the fight, everybody? Yes!